Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about why I don't pay utility bills. That means no electricity whatsoever. Solar hydrogen for beginners, and this is a step by step guide. These steps are quantities how much hydrogen do I get? What can I do with it? So let's get started. Solar areas begin, let's say, from 2 kilowatt peak. And the best is 20 kilowatt peak and a 10 kilowatt hour. The battery, I have very good experience with low voltage battery like 48 volt BYD if you don't want to spend much money on converters. So this is just an experimental test. I use this flexible solar panels. This is a plug to put them in parallel to have the voltage under 100 volt. And this is the electrolyzer. It weighs 30 kilo. It's 48 centimeters tall, 35 10 centimeters deep, and 55 centimeters wide. This is the hose. I branch now just a two liters, 200 bar cylinder. But at this point, you can also have a nozzle to refuel your car. You can have another propane bottle. You can have a huge tank. You can have uh, anything you'd like to fill under pressures up to 300 bars. All this needs to be very tight. That's the way it looks like. This is the version 2.1. It's just the MPP tracker. And you see how I branched the modules. So about hydrogen quantities. Electrolyzer boosts the hydrogen up to 300 bars or 4,350 PSI. Please consider a hydrogen car um, runs on 700 bars, so it can only be filled half. And just to give you a little overview, this is a, let's say, liquid gas storage butane. It contains 5 kilowatt hours. And this is a 200 bar hydrogen container, which only contains four kilograms. So you get the point. It is maybe useful to compress it at least at 300 bars. And that's also industry standard for steel containers, which I highly recommend instead of carbon fiber. So this is the secondary storage. Watch my video about two-stage compression. You have two half empty bottles and you want to make one full bottle. Then you branch this on this side and the, and the other one on the other side and the other one is going to be full at the end and this one is going to be completely empty. Uh, these fittings should be tightened thoroughly, but not too much. Every leak is a loss. These cables go in this way to the electrical equipment. And actually, you can run an electrolyzer directly on a photovoltaic array because an electrolyzer is a DC appliance and there are 12 volt photovoltaic modules. You can branch it directly to the electrolyzer. It will just turn on when the sun is shining and turn off when the sun is going down. I use this MPPT charge controller. Most stationary appliances have uh, inverters and it has a PV smart switch which could activate further loads like an electrolyzer. So here I branch it directly to the tracker. I think these connectors are a little lumpy. In this setup, I just showed you the heat doesn't really matter because it was just an experimental test on a grass field. But 
if you want to run the electrolyzer uh, on a long time we just make a little excursion to the lab because the electrolyzer will emit heat and you can either use this heat or cool it this is just a cooling uh, setup when the temperature is too high I just run it to ambient air. So you can preheat it to have a high amperage or a high load directly. This is a self-regulating heating device with Artex certificate. The temperature should be rising as far as the relay is on. The water is just deionized water. The, I use this filter, but there's also an internal filter. Up to 40 degrees. I will switch on the pump, which is USB. So now let's talk about the compression. So the booster can take up to 448 liters a minute. For this demonstration so purpose, all there's left to do now is connect this fuse. The compressor is way too small, but it's enough for the sun power we get. There's absolutely no battery involved. My little 12 volt lug is connected to the battery, the electrolyzer is connected to the load. No cobalt, no lithium. Yeah, right now I have just 8 modules of 10. Connected. I will switch on now the electrolyzer. Okay, we are producing hydrogen. It's running at 10% of its capacity. This is the oxygen. produces 160 norm liters per hour at full load. Now the compressor switches on and you will see on the primary side the pressure drops and on the secondary side the pressure rises. Also the compressor is now fed by the photovoltaics it has around 300 watts. I will spare you the time and show you just the result after we talk about quantities. So this small device can store 4000 kilowatt hours a year in form of hydrogen. If you would calculate that on a Hyundai Nexo, a hydrogen car, that brings you to 12,000 kilometers for free eventually or with surplus energy. And if you want to just know the volume, uh, if you ever ever seen a hydrogen blimp which can carry 120 kilos like a person, you can fill this blimp in 2.6 days but also you can heat it with catalytic heaters watch the video about catalytic heat heaters if you want to know how you can heat very cheaply so now i just show you how far we can get up yeah and that's all you need to stop paying utility bills. This is the Toyota Mirai. You could fill it with that. It's small. You can carry it. It's sustainable. There are absolutely no CO2 emissions whatsoever involved. No refrigerants, nothing. And the machine is designed after the cradle-to-cradle -cradle design concept, that means 
it's designed to be repaired it's designed to be disassembled and it is designed to have no impact and that's also what interests these people around what is this crazy machine yeah it's a light machine which makes you energy independent and is ha absolutely no hazard for the planet but also it is very good for your pocket so i hope you enjoyed this explanation and i thank you very much for watching and i wish you a wonderful day